So we should mention that, uh, so Spot, for people who somehow are not familiar, uh, so is a yellow robotic dog and um, has been featured in many dance videos. Uh, it also has gained an arm. So what can you say about the arm that Spot has, about the challenges of this design and the manufacture of it? We think the future of mobile robots is mobile manipulation. That's where, you know, the, in the past 10 years, it was getting mobility to work, getting the legged locomotion to work. If you ask, what's the hard problem in the next 10 years? It's getting a mobile robot to do useful manipulation for you. And so we wanted Spot to have an arm to experiment with those problems. Um, and the arm is um, almost as complex as the robot itself, you know, and uh, it's a it's an attachable payload. Um, it has you know several motors and actuators and sensors. It has a camera in the end of its hand, so you know you can sort of see something. The and the robot will control the motion of its hand to go pick it up autonomously. So in the same way the robot walks and balances, managing its own foot placement to stay balanced, we want manipulation to be mostly autonomous, where the robot, you indicate, okay, go grab that bottle, and then the robot will just go do it using the camera in its hand and then sort of closing in on that um, the grasp. But it's it's a whole nother complex robot on top of uh, a complex legged robot. And so, and of course we made it, the hand look a little like a head, <laughs> you know, because again, we want it to be sort of identifiable. In the last year, um, a lot of our sales have been people who already have a robot now buying an arm to add to that robot. Oh, interesting. And so the the arm is for sale. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's an option. What's the what's the interface like to work with the arm? Like, uh, is it pretty? So are they designed primarily? It, it, I could just ask that question in general about robots from Boston Dynamics. Is it designed to be? easily and efficiently operated remotely by a human being? Or is there also the capability to push towards autonomy? We want both. Uh, in the next version of the software that we release, uh, which will be version 3.3, we're gonna offer the ability of, uh, if you have a, an autonomous mission for the robot, we're gonna include the option that it can go through a door, which means it's gonna have to have an arm and it's gonna have to use that arm to open the door. And so that'll be an autonomous manipulation task that just uh, you can program easily uh, with the robot oh, strictly through, you know, we have a tablet interface. And so on the tablet, you know, you sort of see the, the view that Spot sees. You say, there's the door handle. You know, the hinges are on the left and it opens in. The rest is up to you. Oh, Take care of wow. it. Wow. So it just takes care of everything. Yeah. So we, we want, and for a task like opening doors, mm -hmm. you can automate most of that. And we've automated a few other tasks. Uh, we had a customer who had a, um, a high-powered breaker switch, essentially. It's an electric utility, Ontario Power Generation. And they have to, when they're gonna disconnect you know, their power supply, right? That could be a gas generator, could be a nuclear power plant. You know, from the grid, you have to disconnect this breaker switch. Well, as you can imagine, there's, you know, hundreds or thousands of amps and volts <laughs> involved in this breaker switch. And it's a dangerous event because occasionally you'll get what's called an arc flash. As you just do this disconnect, the power, the sparks jump across and people die doing this. And so uh, Ontario Power Generation used our spot and, and the arm through the interface to, to operate this, this disconnect mm -hmm. um, That's really cool. in an interactive way. Mm -hmm. And they showed it to us. And we were so excited about it and said, you know, I bet we can automate that task. And so we, we got some examples of that breaker switch. Mm -hmm. And I believe in the next generation of the software, now we're gonna deliver back to Ontario Power Generation. They're gonna be able to just point the robot at that breaker. They'll be able, they'll indicate that's the switch. Mm -hmm. There's sort of two actions you have to do. You have to flip up this little cover, press a button, mm -hmm. then get a ratchet, stick it into a socket, and un literally unscrew this giant breaker switch. So there's a bunch of different tasks. And we basically automated them so that the human says, okay, there's the switch, go do that part. 
that right there is the socket where you're going to put your tool and you're going to open it up. And so you can remotely sort of indicate this on the, the tablet, and then the robot just does everything in between. And it does everything, all the coordinated movement of all the different actuators that includes Ma the body. Yeah, and it maintains arm. its balance. It, it walks itself you know, into position, so it can, it's within reach, and the arm is in a position where it can do the whole task. So it, it manages uh, the whole body. So how, how does one become a big enough customer to request features? Because I personally want a, a robot that gets me a beer. <laughs> I mean, that has to be like one of the most requests, I suppose, in the industrial setting. That's a, a non-alcoholic beverage <laughs> um, uh, of picking up objects and bringing the objects to you. We love working with customers who have challenging problems like this. and And this one in particular, because we felt like what they were doing, A, it was a safety feature. Mm -hmm. B, we saw that the robot could do it because they, they teleoperated it the first time. Probably took them an hour to do it the first time, right? But the robot was clearly capable. And we thought, oh, this is a great problem for us to work on to figure out how to automate a manipulation task. And so we took it on, not, not because we were gonna make a bunch of money from it in selling the robot back to them, but because it motivated us to go solve what we saw as the next logical step. But many of our customers, in fact, uh, we, we try to, our bigger customers, typically ones who are gonna run a utility or a factory or something like that, we take that kind of direction from them. And if they're, especially if they're gonna buy 10 or 20 or 30 robots, mm -hmm. and they say, I really need it to do this. Well, that's exactly the right kind of problem that we wanna be working on. Mm -hmm. and, and so. Note to self, buy 10 spots <laughs> and aggressively push for beer manipulation. <laughs> I think it's